our solutions are based on when a laptop is not sufficient, you know, with a webcam, or you desire to provide a more polished and professional presentation than you could do looking at a laptop webcam. So that's where our products are, are valuable to you is where uh, you want to either take it up a notch or you need to. All right, so this is just giving you one quick visual of the solutions we've got, and then we're going to go through each one, and then uh, Brian's going to pick up. As you can see, we've got six different cameras, a camera controller, a production switch, a uh, conference speakerphone, and an encoder. And so with this equipment, you can tackle every application that we've covered, which is everything unless I've unless somebody has one they want to mention. We've tried to cover all the possibilities. The the range of cameras that we have are anywhere from high quality but monitor mounted camera and that could be a laptop, it could be a desktop monitor, it could be a conference room monitor any scenario you can think of where you've got a display and you want a camera and a microphone added to that display. And then of course we get into pan, tilt, zoom cameras. Okay, so that's that's kind of just a overview picture for your reference. You'll be getting this presentation, uh, so that's why we made sure this slide showed you all the options that you've got. Now let's just look at each one. The starting point here is just our monitor mounted camera. This is a USB 2.0 interface. And one thing I'd like to just backtrack a little bit is PureLink is pro grade products. We don't actually do consumer products. Please keep that in the back of your mind. Everything is based on professional usage and that's the, the foundation of the product designs. This is not a camera quality that you would walk into Staples or Best Buy, you know, or some retailer and pick up. This is on the, you know, professional end. So the the optics, for example, we always use, you know, higher quality optics, higher quality microphone pickups and automatic exposure, pan tilt zoom mechanisms, everything is a notch up. The simpler camera that we have, this can also be mounted on a tripod and it's plug and play. Once you connect this, it will become your default audio and video. Up from that is a 4K version. This is a true 4K CMOS chip. It will do other resolutions besides 4K, but it will do both motion JPEG and H.264 codec outputs. Now we move into the pan tilt zoom. This has 10x optical zoom on it. It comes with a remote control. The remote control operates all of the different functionalities. So the focus, zoom, pan, tilt, the iris. Uh, so you have complete control over the camera from the remote control. It also allows you to program 10 presets on here. So if you have maybe an application of church and they've got different sections that of the stage or the platform that they want to show, they can preset those and then just call those up. And that could also be true in many, many other applications where the programmable presets would be valuable. But if you have an application where there's more than one camera, while the remote control has the ability to control four cameras of the same type, you might want to use a separate controller, which we have, and I'll show you in a moment. Visca and Pelco, as some of you may know, are industry standard control protocols. If you look at the specs of many cameras, pan, tilt, zoom cameras, they either have Visca control capability capability or Pelco, and in many cases, both like ours. You can mix and match cameras in that case, by the way. If you've got other brands of PTZ cameras, they will all actually work off of the same controller because they use the same control protocol. The next camera up from that is the, uh, the 20 series. This is also 10X. This provides both USB 2.0 and HDMI output. Now we're getting into the next grade of pan, tilt, zoom mechanism. So a very smooth operation on this camera. It also comes with a full function remote, just like what I described in the previous camera, and also allows control from a joystick controller as well. So you could use multiple cameras of this type uh, together in a, in a scenario. Then we go to our USB 3 camera. This is 1080p 60. 
and now we've moved up to 12x optical zoom along with 12x digital zoom so you could achieve combined 144 zoom if you have a long throw room you can do that now this has a dvi output which is also hdmi format so you could connect this hdmi as well with an adapter and this is very high grade optics in this product so i would consider this broadcast production quality and extremely smooth pan tilt zoom and also has a remote control that can control up to four of the same type cameras this comes with a full armament of exposure types and white balance shutter speed and iris control and then the VIP Cam 100. This product has 20x optical zoom. This has a stunning picture. It has multiple output types, so I can use 3G, SDI, HDMI, or a LAN H264 streaming output. These all work simultaneously, so I can connect it through all three of these connections at the same time if I have a need for that. Also, remote control can control up to four of the same camera and can do Visca or Pelco control, as well as, again, a full armament of automatic exposure, dynamic noise reduction, and white balance, including manual white balance adjustment. All of the pan tilt cameras can be ceiling mounted, or wall mounted or desk tabletop shelf mounted and we have brackets for the wall mount and the ceiling mount for all of those that's all six cameras and now we look at the controller this controller is very compact but don't mistake that for how powerful it actually is it is a 4d joystick which allows pan tilt zoom and focus controls the pan and tilt is the xy movements and the farther you move the joystick, the faster the movement is. So if I want just gentle pan or tilt, I just move the joystick a little bit. And if I move it full throttle, push it all the way, then it will speed up the uh, pan or tilt. The zoom is rotation of the joystick in clockwise or counterclockwise. And also the amount I move it impacts the speed of the zoom. So I can do slow and ramp that up to fast or vice versa with the click of a button on the top the rotation turns into focus and there is an indicator on the controller surface that tells me whether i'm in focus or zoom mode as you can see it's quite compact it's actually very economic it has the ability to quickly change what camera i'm operating and i can also call the presets of the camera uh, very quickly from the tactile buttons on there, as well as program presets from this interface. Um, I can set this controller to operate neither Visca or Pelco protocols. This is a very nice piece of gear here. Speakerphone. So this USB speakerphone is 150 millimeters in diameter. It's got a nice big speaker in it. I actually love this thing. I use it. And the, uh, the sound is really good. The microphone pickup is, is great, and it also has automatic gain control as well as echo cancellation and noise suppression. And I've got capacitive interface on the top where I can adjust the volume, mute my microphone, or mute my speaker. Okay, also a really important piece of gear is the VIP Stream 100. So now this is where you if you're not doing collaboration and you want to do presentation, this is a really smart buy, especially cost of ownership. Applications, for example, where you might be streaming a, a church service, trade show, or concert, some type of broadcast. Uh, so I want you to really think about these bullet points. The first one is a very important point, is that I can take any HDMI source and stream it anywhere in the world. When I say any HDMI source, that could be a camera, it could be a production switch, a media player, a laptop. There's a lot of opportunities to take content and distribute it anywhere. And when I say anywhere, it's truly global. We've got listed at the bottom a number of what we call soft codecs, and that may be a, a term you wouldn't usually associate with these logos, but YouTube Live decodes H.264, RTSP, or RTMP multicast. So we 
look at them as codecs. You can stream live to YouTube, and maybe, Brian, you could help me with this. Right now, we're doing a demo of the VIP Stream 100 live on YouTube, and that stream has been running for who knows how long. Depends on when we turn the lights off and on at the office. But the uh, other options are Vimeo live stream and BoxCast and Wowza. And as a side note, it doesn't have to always be used just for broadcasting to the world. You can do this internally uh, for scenarios where in the future there might not be so much social distancing in parts of the world, but VLC Media Player is a soft codec in the sense that it can decode RTSP, RTMP, multicast, and so on. So we've had corporations use this box to distribute content. Some of the examples are mostly in industrial or finance, where they might want to show current interest rates across all the workstations at a bank. That's one. Another is data analytics for industry production. What's the throughput, you know, the current live throughput that's being monitored? But there's many, many other applications uh, that I'm sure you can think of. There's also displays that decode H.264, transport stream, and so on. And this box is used in those cases where you might be doing data sharing or digital signage. There's applications in the entertainment industry where this box is used to data share information at some well-known gaming resellers or uh, entertainment venues like golf entertainment or racing entertainment. We have these products through our integrators deployed in those situations. And just as a side note, there's a Mark II version of this box. Facebook, for some reasons, decided to discontinue support of certain types of streams. Now only support RMTPS, and our Mark II version will allow you to work with soft codecs that require RMTPS, such as Facebook. The Mark II will still work with every other uh, soft codec that is mentioned here. Uh, so it's basically the Stream 100 revised to also allow RMTPS output. Uh, and then there's uh, production switches. So when you we were looking at the camera controller, you've got a number of cameras. You probably want to do switching of those cameras as well as controlling. So this is a, uh, a really feature-packed, high-quality 24-7, 365 compact uh, six-input switcher. Please take a good look at this and talk to us about this when you have a chance. Inputs, we've got 3G SDI and HDMI inputs. The program output, you can do simultaneously 3G SDI and HDMI. The preview output is also called multi-view, and the value in this, you'll see the multi-view output lets me see my preview bus, my program bus, and all six inputs in one display. So I can monitor everything. I guess what we would call the control room or the production room, which may very well be somebody's bedroom today. Take a look at that. It's got cut, fade, wipe, picture in picture, picture on picture. It's a very feature-packed quality product. So what's on you know, the other side of this besides the PureLink products is the collaboration interfaces. I want to backtrack for one moment. This VIP Stream 100 allows you to broadcast to the world without any auxiliary supporting equipment. You don't need a laptop or a desktop or anything. You simply, through the device's web interface, set the destination URL and that is provided to you by any one of these endpoints, YouTube, Vimeo, BoxCast, and Wowza as examples. They provide you with that URL. You enter the URL into the VIP Stream 100 interface, and within moments, you're live. So it's extremely easy to do and does not require anything after setup to operate, you simply turn it on and plug in a source. And uh, we also intentionally designed this so that if it's powered and it has an input, it's streaming. Some research we did finding that, especially in the house of worship market, if we had simply added a start stop button, there would be failures to launch. This automatic streaming resolves that.
where you want to have collaboration, then that's where these types of products tie together with the hardware. So you still need a camera and a microphone and a speaker and, and all that stuff, but you may need a collaboration space. So again, broadcasting presentation style. You don't need any of this. You can use the VIP Stream 100, but if you want to have uh, an interactive experience, then you would add this to our hardware products. Brian, I'm going to flip over to you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So just going going off of what Keith said, and um, to recap the, the products that Keith just went over, I put all, I broke down the products into different categories here. So we have our streaming encoders, our USB cameras, HDMI cameras, and you'll notice that the VIP Cam 20 is in both and bold. Then that's just because that had, that camera, as Keith had mentioned, has both USB 2.0 and HDMI outputs on that camera. And then the VIP Cam 100, not only does it have HDMI, but it also has that 3G SDI and H.264 outputs as well. And then we have our broadcast switchers, camera control and speakerphone. And all of these are linked as well. So when you guys get this presentation, you'll be able to just click these links and go right to those those pages um, to make it easy for easy as possible for, for everybody. So how I kind of approach this this application based um, presentation is I kind of went the route of what areas are being impacted the most right now in the current situation. Uh, you know what what were applications where normally we'd be per, uh, doing in person um, conversations or demonstrations, but now we're forced to do remotely. So that's kind of the the um, the direction I took when I was putting some of these applications to, together. Uh, so to start off, healthcare uh, and there's a lot of these have, as Keith was kind of alluded to in during his presentation, there's a couple ways you can go about each each of these applications. Um, so for instance, healthcare, live, you, we could do a live stream if, there, if, if there's something that needs, you know, a single camera or maybe even multiple cameras where you're viewing a pr procedure possibly or a training seminar. Um, you need multiple or single cameras where you need uh, a broadcast switcher to switch between those cameras. Maybe you need a camera controller to control those different PTZ cameras. Uh, and then the streaming encoder to broadcast that out to the out to the internet, or with healthcare also there's more interactive capabilities that are are needed right now, to, such as telemedicine or meetings and other training seminars. So you, we have our USB camera, our range of USB cameras, as well as our speaker phone that that could be applicable for for those types of applications. And then kind of going, sticking with healthcare a little bit, and this can kind of be um, part of healthcare as well as fitness centers. So from the healthcare aspect, um, I actually saw uh, someone that I was connected with on LinkedIn. Uh, they're a physical therapist, and they were doing remote sessions with their patients. So they had a, they had, they were using a, you know, a soft client, whether it was uh, Zoom or, um, you know, FaceTime or whatever they were, uh, Google Hangouts, uh, and they were they were conferencing with that patient, and they were laying on the 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 you know the medical table, showing them how to do the exercises, and then looking at the patient on the other end, seeing and making sure they were doing that that uh, exercise properly. Now, now they kept in the video, they kind of kept shifting their um, in their their laptop to make sure they were in screen the whole time. So in that situation, you know, one of these PTZ cameras with using the uh, just the just the remote control that it comes with would save that um, physical therapist a little bit of time and uh, complexity. Instead of just moving the the laptop, they can use the remote control to, to move that camera around. And that's the same for fitness sorry. centers. Sorry, Brian. Yes. I just want to interject. That goes back to when I was mentioning a, a more polished presentation is, is another key element is instead of moving the laptop around and trying to get it set, they can preset the camera uh, to positions and also control it much more smoothly during the, 
the live portion. Yeah. Are, are any right, of these and even controlled uh, via a, a, a tablet? So, uh, when you say tablet, um, there are Visca and mostly Visca, but there's Visca and Pelco control applications. And because that's an industry standard control protocol, it will work with our cameras. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are inexpensive. You know, and there's ones with more features that are more. So the short answer is yes, but you kind of have to qualify. Uh, you know, when you say tablet, uh, it to, if it's Mac, Windows, Android, and what applications have been written for Visca and Pelco control. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Yeah. So, so going back to that example with the physical therapist too, um, and the quality of, of the presentation, zooming in as well with the, with the zooming features of these cameras, you know, instead of having to pull the laptop closer, you can zoom in with these cameras. Uh, and from a fitness center pers perspective, if, if there are fitness centers that are still trying to remain open, um, they, they can broadcast, the, you know, maybe they're live, uh, a live, um, exercise uh, class so whether it be like, like a cycling class or a yoga class or, or something like that where they can do um, maybe a live stream where they have a, one of our HDMI cameras going into our streaming encoder uh, where that might not need that that extra level of interactivity um, but they want to be able to broadcast and reach their their clients in, in that way Education, as Keith was saying, his his son is doing this uh, distance learning right now. Um, so there's a there's a couple different avenues that this can take as well. So you have the live stream um, avenue where you have the streaming encoder and the uh, HDMI cameras. If they're if you don't need that level of interactivity, but if you want something that's more, a little bit more interactive, we have the USB cameras that. You can use the soft client uh, video conferencing softwares like Zoom and GoToMeeting and, and, and all those other platforms that, that we've gone over before. So you have that, you have that flexibility of having um, uh, a, just a display-mounted USB camera all the way up to a uh, pan-tilt Zoom USB camera if, that, if the application calls for that. Uh, virtual presentations, again, you can kind of look at this from from two different ways. With the live streaming aspect, if you're if you're doing a um, you know want to be able to show, just need to show clients a product. Maybe so we can't do lunch and learns right now, so maybe this is the avenue you go where you where you live stream. You're live streaming uh, your presentation, or if you want that a little bit more interactivity with your client, you can go the video conferencing route and having those uh, again raising the, the level of uh, the presentation instead of just using a laptop camera webcam that's built into the computer, you have these, these cameras that you can uh, enhance the quality of that presentation so that way the, the clients still have that, uh, high, uh, high, have that user experience that you want them to have uh, while still being done at a di uh, from, uh, from a distance. House of Worship, and Keith had touched on this as well. So live streaming those um, those uh, um, sermons and uh, services that you have. So you can have a simple live stream where you have a single camera going directly into one of our streaming encoders, or if it's a more complex setup where you have multiple cameras going into a broadcast switch and then the streaming encoder, um, and even if you, uh, to take it a step further, have the camera controller to control those cameras. And I actually have a, a diagram that I can show you all as well, so you can get a better idea of how that, something like that might look. Um, so you have, and this is a, just a simple setup, a simple wire diagram with a single camera. Uh, so you have a, a, a camera going into our, uh, our audio embedder, so you're embedding the audio from the microphone from, from the podium and have the video coming into the audio embedder, which is then going into 
our uh, DA, one of our DAs, and that signal is going to then a local monitor just for viewing and to the VIP stream to stream that out to the internet for uh, the whole congregation to see. So you can just, just a, another visual for you guys to be able to see um, how something like that might, might look. All right, we'll, we'll keep moving on uh, to the next one. And the next few are kind of have a, <clears throat> a very similar application-based set, uh, setup with this, with this live stream um, setup. So funerals, Keith had touched on that as well. There, unfortunately, right now there, there, can't, there aren't a lot of people allowed to be uh, allowed into um, a funeral home to, uh, for services and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's kind of immediate family or, or very small group of people, but to reach the rest of that family and friends, um, you, you have that, this live streaming application option where, where try to help and bring, bring that service to, um, more, more of that family. So you, again, you have your single or multiple camera set up with, um, your broadcast switcher or in camera control if needed, or just a single camera directly to the streaming encoder. Uh, trade shows, another, another kind of live presentation, uh, depending on the complexity uh, and the application that you're looking for, um, either a single camera or multiple cameras set up uh, with broadcast switch or, uh, and the camera controller, and again, going directly to that streaming encoder to get get to Facebook Facebook Live or YouTube Live or, or any of those live streaming platforms. Virtual con concerts, similar, sim same kind of setup where depending on the complexity or, or the application, you have a single or multiple ca or multiple camera setup. Virtual gatherings with friends and family. Keith had mentioned um, a couple birthday parties that his son's been to, um, and it, just another way of of trying to be able to enhance that that user experience, to enhance that uh, that presentation, being able to to see family fr and friends a little bit clearer, a little bit better. Um, you have that speakerphone, uh, USB camera type setup where where you can um, at least get a little bit better of that audio and video quality. In corporate art onboarding. This was another. One uh, where you know there are uh, there are companies that are um, it's, it's larger companies that are still trying to hire and still trying to train new employees, um, and they have you know they have always prided themselves on uh, a well, bringing those new employees through through their their headquarters and giving them that onboarding experience that um, you know is known to them. So whether so they can't bring those employees into into he headquarters anymore. So to keep that that user experience high and to keep that that same look and feel, you know, may, maybe you bring in these USB cameras to focus on different training aspects of the onboarding process. Whether it's um, using a PTZ camera to move around a, a training room to focus on different areas, maybe there's um, a whiteboard or um, dry erase board where you can. You're you're taking you're writing down notes or giving lectures for the the training seminar for these new hires, um, and you have that higher quality video uh, experience. Uh, so it's not just a you know a grainy webcam look. You have you have that higher picture quality to 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 give that new hire that that user experience that is as close to in person as possible. Uh, and that's all that's all the the applications that that I came up with, obviously, there's there's I'm sure dozens and dozens more of applications that that this can fit into. But I was just trying to focus on ones that where that might need help the most right now, uh, transitioning from that normally in person experience to that uh, to this distance communication that where we've been kind of thrusted into uh, and and have no other option right now. So those were the kind of applications that that I thought. Uh, Stuck out the most as needing that help immediately. Um, but right now, does anybody have any questions, comments, anything for Keith and I? And here's also our our contact information if you guys have any questions. And again, you guys, you you all will be getting this 
uh, this presentation with our contact information in it as well. 